All right, I haven't made a video in a while, but what's going on guys, Chris here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're talking about what's in my camera bag for 2023 as a photographer based in Paris. Now I've jumped from so many different types of gear from so many different types of companies. So in today's video, we're talking about what I've boiled down to to be my main kit for 2023. And we always have to start with the bag. This heavy bastard is the Douchebags Backpack or DB Backpack. They changed their company name, I think for a pretty understandable reason. This has been my main backpack. I've taken it to everywhere I've traveled to. So, you know, Romania, Ireland, the UK, Switzerland, Italy, obviously here in France, the United States, Greece, you know, the, the list goes on. And it has always performed. It works extremely well. It's very sturdy. Zippers are amazing. It's just very simple, very reliable. It's good looking because for the most part, many camera backpacks just look really bad. It looks like you're going hiking. And someone who's into a more, you know, urban street style, I do like the fact that this is pretty sleek, pretty minimal, and it's just all black. Another feature that's very underrated that I really love about this is the fact that, as you can see, it just stands up, which is really nice because many times I put it down to shoot something. And if it's not built like this, it'll just fall over. All right, so let's get into what's in the bag. On the side here has a computer slot and I have the M1. This is the 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. It's maxed out, but uh, I haven't really had a need uh, to upgrade it to the M2s or the M1 Max or Pro or whatever they've come out with. It works perfectly well. You can easily edit the H.265 files that come out of the Canon R5 or R6 or any Canon camera for that matter. It's the 13 inch and I do like the fact that it's a little bit smaller because it's a lot lighter and easier to take around. If I want that bigger monitor studio feel, then I just plug it into my monitor over there and edit it off of that. But for traveling, 13 inches is really nice. On the other side, I don't use it that often just because I don't really like using little tripods. <laughs> little tripod, that sounds weird. We have the switch pod here with the Joby head that comes from the Gorillapod 5K. I stopped using the Gorillapod just because it's too bulky and kind of flimsy and you know, it's not really safe to put your camera on that. But this guy works extremely well and it's extremely sleek. So it doesn't take up a lot of space in your bag as I struggle to take that out. But the nice thing about this is that yes, it's very sleek like this, very minimal. And if you want you open the legs out and then you have a tripod that you can connect your camera to like so. Again, I don't usually take these out just because I don't really use tripods that often. But if you do need a small travel tripod, these always work. Now, before we get into too much depth on what's in the camera bag, let's talk about the main camera. The Holy Grail still, this is still one of the best, if not the best hybrid camera to date for at least for its price range. Uh, and that's the Canon R5. You know, you have full frame, 45 megapixel photos, 4K up to 120 frames per second, 8K up to 30 frames per second if you need that, 8K raw if you need that. I used 8K for the first time on a project a few weeks ago and it was great for stabilizing the footage but again the oversampled 4k is very crispy looks amazing battery life is good autofocus is amazing the ibis inside is very strong and it does cause a little bit of wobbling as we know at the wider end but then again i don't really use a tripod or a gimbal so just having something that's stable straight in my hands is really convenient. So yeah, in terms of an all around camera that does pretty much everything I would need, the Canon R5 is that camera. But now let's talk about the other body. Now, for those of you who have been following my channel, they know that I've kind of fallen in love with the old school Canon 1DX Mark II. Now this is an amazing camera still, and it came out back in 2016, but I love the photos that come out of this. The feel is just amazing. The build quality is amazing. I've taken this on some professional shoots and I love the results. I find myself just taking pictures with this camera over the Canon R5 because it has only 20 megapixels, so it's smaller file sizes, and just shooting with that satisfying mechanical shutter is just amazing. I love going around and shooting with this. It looks sexy as hell, like it's really beefy. I love shooting vertical like this if I need to, and uh, it's just a great B camera. I talked about it this past summer, whether I should get it. A lot of people said I should, and I definitely don't regret it. I only have one battery for it because the battery life is just amazing. Literally, you can go days without needing to charge it, and yes, Canon camera that just still works amazingly in 2023. And if you wanna check out a video I made about it recently, the link will be up above or wherever that appears. Now, the next camera I've been using a lot is the GoPro Hero 10 Black. Um, I haven't gotten the 11 just because they come out with too many. It's like buying another iPhone every year and I still use the iPhone 12. So yeah, the GoPro works really well, you know, 5K, whatever. I use this a lot for FPV stuff, but uh, currently my FPV drone is being held 
by the French government. Long story, don't wanna get into it, but if you want me to talk about it, I will in another video. Just let me know in the comments down below. So yeah, very amazing quality. What I love using this for is POV photography. So basically just attach it to my chest so I can get a POV view of what my hands are doing as I take pictures. And people seem to like that on Instagram. So that's what I use this for. Or if I need to shoot something underwater, like it takes really good quality photos as well. So uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's an action camera. Now let's talk about lenses. Now the main lens I use almost all the time and for most things, and that's the Canon 16 to 35 F 2.8 Mark one. Yes, this is the Mark one. I didn't get the Mark II, or actually I had the Mark II, but the Mark I seems to perform better. It seems to be quite a bit sharper for some reason. I probably just had a bad copy. I didn't get the Mark III because that was too expensive. I was considering the RF, but I just use EF lenses so much because I used the RED camera for a while and now I have the 1DX Mark II that I just don't want to be limited by which lenses can be used with which cameras. So I still use the Canon 16 35 I have it adapted with the Mica drop-in filter adapter because I love being able to change the ND internally it's been a great lens i use I'm, I'm shooting on it right now and for whenever i'm vlogging or taking wide angle pictures that's what i use now my second lens and probably my favorite lens is the sigma art 51.4 art this is just a beast lens uh, a lot of people don't spend the extra money for a 50 millimeter because it's a pretty standard focal length that you can get for very cheap if you get the 1.8 version from almost any company but for me 50 mil is just beautiful if i only had to use one lens it'd be the lens i would use for everything because you can get beautiful portraits with it. You can get cinematic B-roll with it. You can shoot landscapes with it. You can shoot product photography with it. And I chose the 50 over the 85, mainly because of the focus distance. What I didn't like about the 85 mil is that the focus distance is pretty horrendous. So whenever I wanted to shoot details or portraits or anything like that, I struggled being limited by the focus distance. Now I do leave a really big space at the top here because it depends what I'm shooting. Now in this space, I'll have one of two things, either the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens. Uh, this is an amazing telephoto lens. You can shoot things that are really, really far away with it. And it just looks amazing. It's stabilized. So it's extremely easy to shoot handheld paired with the Ibis of the R5 and that's just a beast of a lens and it fits very easily in that spot right there. Or I will be taking uh, some sort of drone setup uh, up until recently. Again, I've been using the DJI FPV, uh, but uh, I have the Mini 3 Pro, which is phenomenal. So yeah, it's either one or the other. Usually I don't bring both. If I do, then I can squeeze them both in, but usually on most shoots, I know whether I'm gonna need this or need that lens. I forgot to mention there is a lens I use sometimes, not really taken out, uh, but I use the uh, Canon EF 100 millimeter macro f2.8. The reason I love this macro focus distance is very close. If I'm getting detailed shots, product shots, it looks amazing. Uh, but for that reason, I pretty much just use this indoors here in the studio if I'm trying to show details of a products or some B-roll. Now in terms of accessories, it's all very minimal. There's not a lot in this bag. In the top pouch here, I have an extra card for the Canon R5. This is a uh, AV Pro 512 gigabyte card. Here I have the drop-in ND filter for the mic mount uh, to connect my EF to RF. I currently don't need ND, so I have the clear one in right now. Obviously I have to carry adapters and dongles and whatever. Here I have the Samsung T5 SSD. I have the card reader for the Canon R5, the card reader for the 1DX Mark II, and then the, uh, you know, the USB-C to everything you'll ever need. Uh, dongle right here because Apple chose not to give those to us anymore, or at least with the old ones. I think they fixed that. So yeah, I just keep them all in this pocket right here. Don't really think about it too much. And then finally, I do have a regular ND filter in case I need it, in case something happens to the mic, a drop-in filter, or if I'm using the 1DX Mark II because uh, obviously I can't put the drop-in ND filters in the 1DX Mark II because it is EF mount. This is the Freewell Magnetic 2-5. to I really like this one because once it's screwed onto the front element, it is magnetic, as I can show you right here. You can keep it on the lens at all times, and when you're putting your lens away, magnetic lens cap so that you don't have to worry about it getting scratched and you don't have to unscrew it uh, to put your original lens cap back on. So I can just put it back in my bag as so. And then finally for audio, I use the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Uh, I really love this one because it sounds great. 
doesn't require any batteries or anything. It can plug directly into my computer via USB-C in case I want to record a voiceover and it's just small and lightweight. Uh, but I do recommend you purchase the Dead Cat for it uh, through Rode because uh, it doesn't come with one when you purchase it. And if you're shooting in the wind, you're definitely going to need it. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. This is pretty much what I take on a shoot, depending what it is, depending if I'm traveling or if I'm just going on a photo shoot. I really like this setup because it's very minimal, very simple. I don't like having a lot of things, a lot of accessories. As you see, there's no cleaning cloths. There's no extra stuff. For me, my lens is dirty. Come on. My shirt's fine. I wipe it off. It looks fine. I'm shooting wide open anyways. You can't even see it. The only thing I kind of forgot to mention is, you know, extra batteries or the charger for my laptop if I'm traveling. But for the most part, this is the main kit. This is what I take with me. Very excited for this year. Very excited for 2023. Um, and yeah. All right. So that's pretty much it for this video. Again, if you want to purchase any of these things, the links will be down in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. All right. Peace.